सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू एक्सप्लोर मेमोरीज हाउ वी कैन यूज डायनेमिक मेमोरीज टू क्रिएट टेस्ट बेंच कॉम्पोनेंट्स देयर आर सम न्यू टाइप्स ऑफ मेमोरीज दैट हैज़ बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन सिस्टम वेरी लॉग सो द क्वेश्चन इज वाई वी नीड दीज न्यू टाइप्स ऑफ मेमोरीज सो इन वेरी लॉग एच डी एल एवरी थिंग इज स्टेटिक इन नेचर एज अ डिजाइनर इफ यू डिफाइन सम टाइप ऑफ एरेज वाइल राइटिंग दिस सोर्स कोड इट वुड बी एनफर्ड इधर एज अ रैम और रोम सो नथिंग इज गोइंग टू चेंज डायनेमिकली इन रियल हार्डवेयर बट वेन इट कम्स टू सिमुलेशन बेसिकली वी थिंक ऑफ रनिंग रैंडम सिमुलेशन एंड येस इन केस ऑफ सिस्टम वेरी लॉग वी रन रैंडम सिमुलेशन सो इट इज नॉट ओनली अबाउट जनरेटिंग रैंडम नंबर्स ऑफ पैकेट्स बट वी वॉन्ट टू क्रिएट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पैकेट्स वाइल रनिंग द रैंडम सिमुलेशन सो हियर वी थिंक ऑफ क्रिएटिंग डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सीनैरियोज लाइक द गुड पैकेट्स बैड पैकेट्स एरर पैकेट्स दीज आर सम कॉमन सीनैरियोज so during the simulation we may want to think of storing all these packets into memories and in this case the memory should be able to expand and shrink automatically based on the number of reads and writes that we do during the simulation so in today's video we will see packed arrays unpacked arrays dynamic arrays associative arrays and queues one by one we will discuss each point in detail so starting with the packed arrays for some data types you may want both to access the entire value and also divide it into smaller elements so a system very log packed array is treated as both an array and a single value it is stored as a contiguous set of bits with no unused space unlike an unpacked array these packed arrays are primarily used for modeling the data buses registers and other bit oriented hardware elements in packed arrays the packed bit and word dimensions are specified as a part of type before the variable name so you can see uh, it is of one dimension and multi dimension so we will uh, discuss all the examples here so you can see here we have a bit then 7 down to 0 bytes so it is an example of one dimensional packed array so we have bytes of 0 bytes of 1 bytes of 2 till bytes of 7 so this is one dimensional packed array another one is bit 3 down to 0 7 down to 0 b array so it is an example of two dimensional packed array so you can see here 8 bits then again 8 bits 8 bits and 8 bits so total 32 bits are packed here another one is bit 3 down to 0 7 down to 0 b array of 3 so this is an example of three dimensional packed array so here you have b array of 0 b array of 1 b array of 2 and each one is of 32 bits that is four 8 bits combination and as i already told it is bit oriented next one is unpacked array so these unpacked arrays are not bit oriented so you can see some unused space also these unpacked arrays can be of one dimensional or multi dimensional and similar to a uh, packed arrays the data types can be of any uh, very long data type here in case of unpacked array the dimensions are declared after the variable name however in case of packed array these dimensions we have to declare before the variable name so this is the difference you can see the example here bit and then the uh, array name and then the size which you are giving here next one is bit b array 3 and 7 so we are defining these dimensions after the variable name so this is a way you can identify whether the given example is of packed array or unpacked array so in this example you can see some unused space are there so it is not bit oriented so yes this is an example of unpacked array next is dynamic array so the basic very log array types shown so far is known as a fixed size array as its size is set at compile time but what if you do not know the size of array until run time so a dynamic array is declared with empty word subscript and it allows to change the size of the array during the run time during the declaration we need not to uh, give a fixed size to this array and yes we can resize it as per our requirement during the simulation this resizing can be done by using different methods like the push back or assigning a new size that we will see in our examples so here we have an example of how you can declare a dynamic array 
So int that is showing the data type, then the name of the array and then the square bracket. Here you need not to define the size. Next is dynamic array dot pushback. Let's see some more examples. So here we have int dynamic array of dyn and d2. So we have taken two empty dynamic arrays here. Then in initial begin dyn equals to new of five. So here we are allocating five elements to this uh, dynamic array dyn. Now for each dyn of j, dyn of j equals to j. That means dyn of 0 equals to 0, dyn of 1 equals to 1, dyn of 2 equals to 2 till dyn of 4 equals to 4. Total 5 new elements that means 0 to 4. Now we are copying this dyn value into the d2 and the next line is d2 of 0 equals to 5. So what we are doing here we are modifying the copy. Dollar display dyn of 0 and then d2 of 0. So what is d2 of 0? It is nothing but 5 which we have allocated here and dyn of 0. So dyn of 0 is nothing but 0 which we have assigned here dyn of j equals to j. So what you will get here? The values 0 and 5. Dyn of 0 is 0 and d2 of 0 is 5. Next line is dyn equals to new 20 and then dyn. So here we are expanding this uh, uh, dynamic array and we are copying the existing values. The next line is dyn equals to new of 100. So here we are allocating 100 new integers and the old values are lost because we are not copying any old values here. We are assigning 100 new values. The next is dyn dot delete. So here, here we are deleting all the elements. So this is a way how you can apply different different uh, operation on the dynamic array. I hope it is clear to you. Next is queues. So system very log introduces a new data type that is queue, which provides easy searching and sorting in a structure that is as fast as a fixed size array, but as versatile as a linked list. So these queues are nothing but a type of dynamic array that follows FIFO that is first in first out order. Like a dynamic array queues can grow and shrink but with a queue you can easily add and remove elements anywhere. In queues new elements can be added and removed easily. Also the elements can be accessed from any location directly using the index. Let's see some examples here. So we have taken int and and then q dollar so this is a way how you can declare a queue then we have written q dot push back of one so here we are in queuing an element the next line is int front element equals to q dot pop front so here we are dequeuing an element we are popping the front value from the queue and then assigning that into the integer front element let's discuss this example int j equals to 1 and then we have taken two different queues q1 and q2 q1 is 3 comma 4 q2 is 0 comma 2 comma 5 so this is the initialization of the queue then we have uh, applied some operation here so q2 dot insert 1 comma j so what we are doing here uh, we are inserting this j at one index that means at first index we are inserting this jth value so value of j is one so we are inserting one at first index so the updated value of q2 will be 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 5 because we have inserted this one at first index the next line is q2 dot insert 3 comma q1 so we are inserting q q1 at third index so the updated value of q2 will be 0 comma 1 comma 2 and then insert this q1 that is 3 comma 4 comma 5 so the this entire q q1 will be inserted at the third index so this would be the updated value of q2 so here you can see how you can insert a single value and how you can insert an entire q into another q then q2 dot delete one so we have to delete the value present at the first index so at first index we had this one so this is deleted the final value would be 0 comma 2 3 4 and 5 this is the updated value also here we have written q2 dot push front 6 so we have to push this value 6 into front 
सो अपडेटेड वैल्यू विल बी सिक्स जीरो टू थ्री फोर फाइव देन जे इक्वल्स टू क्यू टू डॉट पॉप बैक सो वी हैव टू पॉप अ वैल्यू फ्रॉम द बैक ऑफ द क्यू एंड असाइन दैट वैल्यू इन टू वेरिएबल जे सो द लास्ट वैल्यू ऑफ द क्यू वॉज फाइव सो दिस फाइव विल बी पॉप्ड ऑप एंड इट विल बी असाइन इन टू द वेरिएबल जे सो हियर जे इज इक्वल टू फाइव नेक्स्ट इज क्यू टू डॉट पुश बैक एट सो वी हैव टू पुश दिस वैल्यू एट इन टू द्यू क्यू टू so you can see here the last value is 8 this is the updated value of the q now this line j equals to q2 dot pop front we have to popped up the uh, front value of the q so the front value was 6 so this 6 will be popped up and assigned into this variable j so here j equals to 6 so in this way you can apply different different methods into queues so i hope you understand the concept of queues it's very simple uh, it's single dimension array with automatic sizing and uh, many type of methods like searching sorting and insertion uh, can be easily applied into these queues it is a flexible memory with variable sizing also one thing guys if you have not joined our telegram group till now then do join it because more than 1500 students are there they are discussing their doubts they are sharing some uh, useful resources is there so it's a very great platform to share and discuss with your peers so join this community and share with your friends also to be a part of this electronics engineer community next is associative arrays so dynamic arrays are good if you want to occasionally create a large array but what if you want something really huge perhaps you are modeling a processor that has a multi gigabyte address range so during a typical test the processor may only touch a few hundred or thousands of memory locations uh, containing executable code and data so at this point of time allocating and initializing gigabytes of storage is wasteful so system very log offers associative arrays that store entries in a sparse matrix This means that while you can address a very large address space system verilog only allocates memory for an element when you write to it these associative arrays also known as associative memories here we use keys to access the elements these associative arrays are very flexible and versatile in nature here the memory will be allocated only while writing the data memory read and write can happen in non contiguously these associative arrays can be accessed with integer or string index it is great for sparse arrays with wide ranging index it has some built in functions also like exist first last next and previous so let's see some examples int then associative array of string so here you we have used this key string next one is associative array key equals to 42 so here we are adding a key value pair you can see in this figure how the memory is allocated non contiguously that means it is not in contiguous manner randomly the memory has allocated so let's discuss this example module test then int asmem of int so this asmem is nothing but associative memory and the key is integer here initial begin then we have assigned some values to this associative memory so asmem of 4 equals to 2 asmem of 150 equals to 6 asmem of uh, 45 equals to 20 and asmem of 200 equals to 78 so we have assigned different values to these elements like 4th 15th 45th and 200 then we have given command if asmem dot exist 45 so we are checking whether this entry 45 exist or not if it will exist then this line will be printed entry exist and value is the value will be printed here if this entry will not exist then it will display no entry the next dollar display command is number of entries in array so let's see what we will get after the simulation so Uh, the first output of this dollar display is entry exist value is 20 because at 45th position the value 20th is allocated so here the value is 20 the next dollar display command is number of entries in array so you can see here total four entries are there in this array so it will print number of entries in array is 4 so this output you will get here 
So this is it guys in today's video we have discussed memories of system Verilog that is packed arrays unpacked arrays dynamic array associative array and queues you might have learned some new concepts in associative arrays and dynamic arrays so if if it is not clear to you you can uh, pause the video just uh, repeat those parts watch it again and if also you have any doubt you can just write it down into the comment box one more suggestion for you if you are watching these system verilog videos make sure that you are preparing a proper notes then only it will worth watching these videos and you can refer your notes in future as well so watch the complete playlist and prepare the notes we will meet in the next part thanks for watching